Remember to read the question beforehand so that when you're reading a passage, you know exactly what you're supposed to be paying attention to. What does the text most strongly suggest about the songs sung by Rainey and Smith? So what about the song? That's what I care about. In her 1998 book, Blues, Legacies, and Black Feminism, Angela Y. Davis bases her analysis in part on recordings of songs sung in the 1920s by Gertrude Ma Rainey and Bessie Smith. Davis focuses on how Rainey and Smith improvised the lyrics, so improvised, strong word, replacing the original lines with mischievous jokes and wordplay. So mischievous kind of stands out to me there. Davis's work was particularly labor uh, intensive because in order to transcribe or write down the lyrics as Rainey and Smith sang them, Davis had to listen repeatedly to the vinyl recordings, which weren't very clear. So we have some kind of like good things here. Maybe this is bad. It's hard to say. That I'm using positive and negative in a very loose sense, but I think it could go either way here, depending on what we want to focus on about these songs. So let's look at the choices. Hopefully they give us more direction. A, the songs have grown in popularity since Rainey and Smith first sang them. This is definitely a quantifier right here. Is it grown? I don't think so. Uh, it just seems like we're talking about them. I don't really know what's going on now. They were recorded in the 1920s. She's listening to them now. I don't know what other people think. So just seems wrong. B, there were more recordings made of Rainey's songs than there were of Smith's. Well, this is a comparison. Now, we are talking about both Rainey and Smith, but I don't think that we are comparing them, especially to say one is like more or better or whatever. It just seems like we're talking about them together as a unit. So to rank them or set them apart from each other seems wrong. Um, C, there were few, mm, quantifier, if any reliable transcriptions of Smith's and Rainey's improvised lyrics when Davis began her research. Well, Okay, I was a little skeptical with the word few, but the transcription piece, they're talking about that, right? That's the, she's writing them down, right? Transcribe is the word there. So there were few of them because I guess Davis had to do the work of writing them down herself. So that that seems like it could make sense that, that the songs had few transcriptions and that's why Davis had to work so hard to do it. Feels a little bit like I'm, you know, telling a story there, but I've got some evidence of it. Let's look at D, see if we get anything better. According to Davis, the songs sung by Rainey were more musically innovative than those sung by Smith typically were. Again, this is a comparison, just like B, uh, trying to set these two people against each other. That is not the purpose of this passage. So maybe if I'm a little skeptical of C, it's all washed away by the fact that all the other choices are much worse. So this is why it's helpful to understand the kinds of trap answers the SAT uses again and again and again. Comparisons are a big one. Quantifiers are a big one. Now, just because one of those words is in a choice does not mean that it's necessarily wrong because it just means that we have to go and prove that idea in the passage. And yes, like I feel like I can prove that there are a few transcriptions because Davis had to do the whole work of transcribing them herself. Why would she do that if there were lots of transcriptions? So I feel like I've got evidence of that. It still makes me nervous at first sight, but I, I'm not going to just instantly eliminate things like that. I'm going to go and, and go back to my memory, go back to the passage and prove it wrong. But there's always a reason I'm proving a choice wrong, not just, eh, seems wrong. That's just a feeling. That's not reliable.